Guys, I have got a secret to tell you. It is the best kept secret in all of fantasy. This is the best series that has really not had the accolades that it deserves thus far. It's one that's gone under the radar for so long, but now is it's time to rise. Are you ready? The Curse of the Mistwraith by the incomparable Jaddy Words. I'm just sitting here like bouncing with energy because, ah, this book is so good. This book is so, so good. <laughs> I just need to gush. I just need to gush. You'll have to excuse me that I will be reading from some of my written review. Like it took me so long to get my words out for that. I, I don't think I could explain it any better. So if I am looking down, it's, it's because, uh, I, I just need a um, reading from uh, my review to remind me of what to say because otherwise I'm just going to be in an incomprehensible mess because, oh, this book. Wow. When I sat down to write this, I just thought, I just couldn't comprehend how I was going to possibly put into words what this book meant to me, what the journey it took me on was. I, I managed it somehow and it was... Nearly 3,000 words, so <laughs> strap in, folks. If I could sum up my thoughts in a few sentences, it would be a monumental achievement in fantasy literature, one which beguiles you into a world doomed to be torn apart by two brothers and their moral quandaries. In all sincerity, this is the best prose since Shakespeare, and Wurtz's masterpiece has completely changed the game in fantasy. With a slow but steady rise in the booktube community as of recent, now is truly her time to shine and shine bright. Now, I truly believe that. I truly believe that with all my heart. I am so excited. We've got Philip Chase and his buddies like uh, Jimmy Nuts and uh, AP Canavan that are going to be covering it. You've also got videos of me and Blaze from Under the Radar SFF Books and a few others discussing it. You've also got P.L. Stewart, I believe, is doing his own discussion. There's, it's just going to be a deluge of content. It's fantastic and it, it needs to get out to the world because this book is incredible. So before I go completely off piece, let's keep some sort of structure to this. Let me read to you what the blurb of this book is. The world of Athera lives in eternal fog. Its skies obscured by the malevolent mystery. Only the combined powers of two half-brothers can challenge the Mistwraith's stranglehold. Arathon, Master of Shadow, and Lysair, Lord of Light. Arathon and Lysair will find that they are inescapably bound inside a pattern of events dictated by their own deepest convictions. Yet there is more at stake than one battle with the Mistwraith, as the sorcerers of the Fellowship of Seven know well. For between them, the half-brothers hold the balance of the world, its harmony and its future in their hands. So far, you're probably thinking two brothers that are fighting, light and shadow, big world-ending consequences. What's, what's the hype? You know, this just sounds like any other fantasy. Well, this is not just any other fantasy. This is a Jenny Wirt fantasy, everyone. And it is in the execution of the story that is, its brilliance comes out. So you may have heard a few things about this, that its prose is really hard and difficult to get into. And that it's a really kind of gatekeeper-y kind of book. And let me just dispel that myth. Because, yes, okay, it, it's a very poetic prose. It's very flowery prose, eloquent. And it does take some getting used to. It does. But once you get into her style, into her rhythm, that, that Jani lulls you into it like a little lullaby, and it is very musical, the prose itself, and the way it's written, you will definitely, definitely be able to read it. It might not be for everyone, it might not be for everyone, but it is not as difficult as everyone says, you know? It, it's like this myth about Malazan, right? And everyone's like, oh, it's this really difficult book, it just 
plops you in and then you're like what's going on and it puts so many people off reading it i mean i still haven't like really started reading it properly yet and, and this is one of those things that's so sad to see especially for an author like journey who is one of the most hard-working authors that i know that has, has been championing her, her books for decades when she hasn't always had the support behind her that she should have done this this doesn't deserve this this idea that it's a difficult book it is not a difficult book. It is a really, really enjoyable chonker. And yes, it is a chonker. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Jani, <laughs> I don't mean to destroy your book, but you can, you can hear how heavy that sounds, and that's just the paperback. I mean, it's, it's about 800 pages, but I mean, it's fairly, fairly, fairly sized uh, text. Please, I implore you to read in have a and have a nosy, have a wonder, a little gander into this world yourself. You will not be disappointed. It won't be for everyone, but I think everybody can appreciate the the mastery and the musicality behind the prose. And it's not just the prose that is brilliant. The structure, the structure, ah, oh, it is it is a wonderful structure. Each chapter is structured into sections, and, and you kind of have at the end you you have like these little three little sort of almost like really like, like literally a paragraph of like interludes is, is probably I compare it to like Sanderson's interludes but but it's literally three or four lines telling you about what's going on in the world and it's really cool because you get to experience you get you get a sense of what's going on in the wider story and and I, I sense there's a lot of foreshadowing in there as well as like sort of showing what's going on in the wider world it's almost like telling you you know like you have at the end of the like anime or the cartoons is like next time and it's like that little 30 second clip it's like that it's almost giving you a hint of what's going on in the next chapter and, and everything is important everything is a hint everything in this is necessary so drink it in milk it because you know you, you're going to be really surprised just how much comes back into play and I'm sure that this is one of those series that rereading it is going to blow my mind. But the structure of the book as a whole, it starts off on a completely different world. And then we kind of go into another world, which isn't really a spoiler. It, it happens very early on. And these princes are taken into this other world. And, and it does take its time to get going. It, it's a little bit of a... It's a little bit of a quest fantasy. Well, it, well, it is a quest fantasy. And, and it, so it starts off really a big pirate naval battle. Really cool. And then they get in this world. And then there's a lot of journeying. And then it builds up to the end. And, and something that Jani says is that, you know, she has a structure where big bombastic starts sort of in the middle, the, 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 the meat of it. And then big ending. And she always delivers. And we'll talk more about the ending later because... Yeah, and, and, it, and it really does deliver in that sense, you know, Sanderson is famous for Sands Lunch, well, Jani Wirtz definitely has her, the, the Wirtz Lunch, no. So the structure is definitely one that rewards rereading, and it's definitely one where everything is in its place for a reason. What the series is famous for and what Jani often talks about is these layers within layers and these spirals, so the, the story doesn't, well, it, it does get bigger, it does start to sprawl, but it, it, it's not, the series isn't getting wider, it's, it's getting deeper, it's, oh, it's, it's so hard to explain it and not sound weird, but it, it really does spiral and it has layers. Okay, um, mom, ogres are like onions. They stink? Yes. No. Oh, they make you cry? No. Oh, you leave them out in the sun, they get all brown, start sprouting little white hairs. No. <laughs> Layers. Onions of light. And so there are things that maybe they, that, that they're a little off, they might not make sense, and you sort of got these questions. I promise you, it will come back to it, and it will answer a lot of those questions and everything, literally everything is there for a reason. This book is just chock full of well building. It's blown my mind. I mean, Jani spent 30 years before she wrote this, 30 years building up to this. This is her magnum opus and what a magnum opus it is. At the time when you're reading it, you know, it's very much 
a linear story, but it also spirals, it comes back around and everything that didn't make sense definitely starts to make sense when things are revealed in the story and what a story it is. I mean, these characters of Aravon and Lysaia, these are the two central characters, the central conflict of this book and, and this series as a whole. And, and what's really clever is that, so the series, if you don't know, is going to be, I think it's 13. The final book is just about to come out, Song of the Mysteries. And so the book, the series itself is split into arcs. So arc one, book one, arc two is books two and three, and then arc three is, I can't remember, but essentially, yeah, this, this book is arc one, the second arc is books two and three, and then it goes on and on. The final book is an arc in itself as well. I think there's five arcs. And so this, the structure of the book and the series and the arcs mirrors, it all mirrors one another. So it starts off with, with sort of a bang and then it sort of mellows out and, and gets all the world building and, and all the sort of foreshadowing in there. And then it builds up to a climax halfway through and then sort of mellows out a little bit and then builds up to a big climax that really packs a punch. So that's how the book works. There's also how the arcs work and there's also how the series works. And so Janu talks about, I think it's arc three, that is kind of like the halfway point of the series. I think it's Perils Gate is the book that, that is also the, the halfway point of the series. And so it, it's really well structured. It's, it's just amazing how much is planned out and the world building is just millennia of history. The magic is, it's very interesting. It's very residency based, very physics based. We don't get too much of it here. There's, there's sort of stuff going on with like these lines, like, like almost like a ley line kind of thing in the world. like. It's very odd. There's we don't get too much of it in this book, but there's enough there to, to tantalize you. And I appreciate that as a reader because I don't always understand the magic systems that are very scientific and I don't understand a lot of this magic system, but I understand enough to be able to get me through the story. And and Jani's really good at that. That that if you want to, you can do a deep dive into all the history and that, but but if you don't, you know it's it's there. But Jani explains everything you need to. But that's enough about that. Let's talk about the characters. Because the characterization of this is really just, oh. These characters, Arathon and Lysair, they're not just, like I said, cardboard cars. They're not just one's bad, one's good. There's new ones, you know? One moment you might like one, one moment you might like the other. You know, the, you understand both sides. I will say my favourite is Arathon as of this moment. I am rooting for him. But you know, Lysaia, he's, he's not a bad guy either. Ne neither of them are. They're also not good. They, they make bad decisions. So do all the characters in this. One of my other favourite characters was a guy called Dakar. Dakar is oh, great. He's, he's a funny, he's kind of like a lazy drunk. He works with this team of wizards that's called the Fellowship of the Seven. And... A lot of people don't seem to like him, they seem to get frustrated by him. For myself, I loved him, I loved him, he was so funny. But that's another thing this book has a reputation for, it's not very funny, there's, there's not light-hearted moments. There are plenty of light-hearted moments in this, there are plenty of moments I chuckled out loud. This isn't a book that's just relentlessly serious. There, there's a lot of times that it is serious, but you know, one thing that Janny does really well, one of my favourite scenes was this comedic moment with, with Dakar, which slowly, subtly shifts into this really intensely foreboding sequence that, my goodness, that is a Chekhov's gun if I ever saw one. Jani is so good at melding all these things together, putting it all together. This is a series that I just, it's just incomprehensible how sprawling, how wide, how big it is and, and it needs someone like Janny to hold it all together. So when we get in this world we have these two characters, Arathon and Lysaia. They're the two main characters that, that are in this War of Light and Shadow. And then you have this, what they call the Fellowship of the Seven, who are kind of like the Gandalf kind of figures. So we have Esandir, who is like the main Gandalf-like figure. And then you have Seth there and they're both kind of like really prominent figures within this Fellowship of the Seven. There's also a lot of questions with them. Are they are they the good guys? What are their motives? You know, we still don't know. We we trust them because these characters did, but there were times that I was sort of wondering what's going on with them. And then on the flip side of that, you also have sort of sisterhood called the Koyani. They're probably best compared to the Aes Sedai in the Wheel of Time books by Robert Jordan. They are very unique and very different. 
we don't get too much experience with them except I don't really like them. They're, they're, they're odds with the Fellowship of the Seven and it's not that I don't like them because they're poorly written, they're very well written. I just don't like them because they're very stubborn, very motivated for themselves. There's something going on with them. Um, I'm not quite sure yet. But I mean, all these characters are so richly and vibrantly portrayed and you're always constantly trying to work out what are their motives? What, what are they in this for? Who are they? And, and you bring all these questions. I love that. I, I wrote down so many notes. It's ridiculous. I was really meticulous with sort of trying to pick out and things because I know that there's so much foreshadowing in this. And that was a really fun experience for me. And it's interesting because I mentioned earlier that a little bit of times that I was confused, that things seemed a little off. And I was trying to get a grasp on some of these characters, right? And, and there were things that didn't quite mix. And um, I was talking to Jani on Twitter. She's a lovely, lovely lady and answered a lot of my questions and is really open to, to communication. Is very, very enthusiastic and excited to, to interact with readers. I was told by people, by Jani and, and by Blaze, who, who are helping me along, that don't like it will start to make sense. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm just going to trust you on this one. It makes sense. There are character reasons why they seem like opposed almost. And when it makes sense, it really comes into the light. You really understand, wow, that's why. And it, you have so many of those moments towards the end of this book. And I can't wait till I get the rest of this series that it's, I'm waiting for those moments. I've been told that I'm going to have them. And so these characters, they're not just... They've not just got one aspect to them. They are nuanced. Like everything in the series is nuanced. And that's what Jani sort of started the series about, to talk about the nuances of war, of history. You know, it's this idea that history is written by the victor, that what is truth? There's these really deep philosophical questions in this. So if you really want to engage in that, there's a lot of stuff about what's free will, what's nature versus nurture. There's, there's all this stuff packed in there. And... Jani just explores it in the most exquisite, exquisite way. The way that music is used in this book is just, oh my goodness, you can tell that Jani, I believe she's a musician, you know. I believe that, that as part of her research, you know, she did stuff like going out, having adventures, learning to sail, learning music. She's an artist as well, a very talented artist. She did the cover art for uh, one of the versions of this series. You know, there's just so much talent to her. And I don't want everyone to think that I'm just being positive because I want authors to like me or, you know, or I feel bad or something. This journey, I, I loved it. I'm not afraid to tell you when I don't like a book to see my Red Rising review. But this really just, just blew me away. Now let's talk briefly about the ending. Oh boy. That ending is the most beautiful thing I've ever read. Seriously, seriously, I'm, I'm not just being hyperbole, that, that ending was just... <sighs> you know, I was, I was a little worried, because I love cliffhangers. I know, I know, but I love cliffhangers. And I'd heard that Jani kind of wraps it all up, every book, and it's promised. So you have the big climax and it's all wrapped up. And in my head going into it, I was like... Oh, you know, I, I kind of like a little hook, you know, something, something to keep me going. And so I was thinking, oh, it's just going to feel like a standalone. Let me tell you, it does not feel like a standalone. It's not a cliffhanger, that is for sure. But there are definitely little hooks that are there for you to follow. As Johnny promises, I won't go into details because of spoilers, but it does end in a really big way. And it definitely does sort of ramp up at the 75%-ish mark. Jani in the action is just, she writes her action so well. Even though I did at times get a little confused, the way that she builds up tension is just the most unique way I've ever uh, found in a book. You know, a lot of tension is normally plot-driven, right? That, oh no, my character might die. And so when we feel like there's a lot of plot armour that, we're not scared that the character's going to die, that's when we start to lose interest, right? And so you have to be very, very careful with your plotting when you're trying to get your tension right. But with Jani, her tension didn't necessarily come from her plotting. 
It came from her characterization. There was one particular thing that just blew me away. It really just, I was just sitting there like, wow. Of course, there was tension that the characters might die in, and, and it definitely didn't feel plot armory. But there was one moment where a character had to make a particular choice. And to make either choice would go completely against their nature. And, and that idea of the nature of a person is something that's really important to this book and this series. And so there was this tension because this character was having to make this impossible choice whilst in the midst of this action and turmoil going on around them. It was just incredible that I never realised that you could build tension through characterization, and it's just changed my perspective. And it's really interesting that for me, as someone that, that, that is creative and wants to work, is working on an audio drama, that's something that I want to look into writing into my own things. And, and so I thank Jani for, for bringing that to my attention. But this ending, how do I describe it? It's really difficult. It, 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 it folds everything together, and it brings everything to a... It closed, but like I say, it leaves the door open. And one thing Jani does that I love is that she sits in the emotions, which not a lot of authors do. It's one of my pet peeves. I probably mention it a lot, but Jani sits in that emotion. She lets it soak in. And it didn't, like I say, make me cry because I wasn't as intensely connected to some of the characters at the end because we didn't spend much time with them. But it still emotionally resonated with me. It still hit me it still really made me think, wow, what, who, who's the bad guys here? Like, what's, it really makes you reflect. And that's one of the things is that there's a lot of tropes in it, they're, they're, they're not in a negative way, but you know, you have all your fantasy in there that you can want, you have dragon-like creatures, you, I'm not even gonna say, there's some creatures in there that I'm surprised they're in it. I want to let you discover that for yourself. I nearly said it, but yeah. You know, it has prophecies, it has everything, battles. But what Jani does is she makes you think and reflect on it and then uses that to, to reflect on our society as a whole. And like I say, there's these very philosophical elements to it. There's just this incredible richness and depth to it. And I cannot, cannot wait to see what the conversations AP and Dr. Fancy, Philip Chase, have because I can only imagine how in-depth they're going to go with all the, the richness that is here. I did have a few things that didn't quite work for me or, or might not work for other people. So it's really complex in terms of the world building. It definitely takes time to enter the rhythm of Jani's prose. And I read this book sort of in two halves. I got to the 50% mark, took up Red Rising and then got back into this. And it did take time to get back into the rhythm. At times towards the end, I got a little lost in the action because Jani's very meticulous in her research and there's a lot of words in there that I didn't know and, and I always find it hard to visualise battles anyway and so sometimes I did get a little lost but that's more a personal thing and there's a lot of POV shifting so I, I think it's the third person omniscient I think but basically it's like a lot of the time you're shifting that like one sentence you'll be in one character's head and the next sentence you'll be in the other character's head and I didn't find it confusing once I got used to it, but I know some people don't particularly like that style, so it may not be for you if, if you like to have that one sort of POV or multi POVs where it's locked in for that chapter or that section. The ending was really, really beautiful. It's the most beautiful ending I've ever read. And yet at the same time, it wasn't entirely emotional for me because a lot of the characters that were introduced for the ending were introduced quite near to that end. And so we didn't get that time to connect with them. And if we'd had that, it would have been a really emotional climax. But at the end, you know, I wasn't crying. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. And, and I know that as the series goes on, as we get deeper and deeper and get to know and grow with these characters, that we will get those emotionally complex moments. And I know that because Janet's characterization is so good, and it's just one you have to experience. Just cannot recommend this book enough. It won't be for everyone. The pros, I think everyone can appreciate even if it's not for them. The characterization, just everything is just so meticulously put into its place. And I think everybody will really appreciate the, the, the craftsmanship that has gone into this. Even if this kind of really rich, dense world is not for you. And so I really encourage everyone Go read this book, explore, don't listen to what people have said, don't even listen to what I've said, <laughs> most of it incomprehensible. 
Go find out for yourself, see if you like it, and come back and thank me afterwards. <laughs> this is just one of the most incredible experiences I've had reading in a book. It's not my favourite of the year, surprisingly. I think just because, mainly because the book that's my favourite of the year, Thomas Howard Riley, We Broken Mortals, it came along at the right time and it's an unforgettable journey. But this is definitely probably my second favourite book of the year and I'm so excited to get further into the series. I will try and make my next review more comprehensible because I, I, I've just gush, 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 gushed. Just beautiful characterization, beautiful ending, beautiful plot, beautiful world building, just beautiful all round. So thank you for watching guys, I really appreciate it. Please like, subscribe, comment down below. Have you read this book? Are you gonna read this book? What do you think? What are your thoughts after this review? Anything, I'd love to talk with you down below. And you can also find me on Twitter, all the usual links are down below. Thank you for watching guys, till next time. And that's the sound of my washing. Just when I'm trying to record a video. Why is life so inconvenient?